Yo everybody, what's going on? This is Keegan from K-Man Reviews. If you enjoyed this review, make sure you hit that like and the subscribe button. And if you have any opinions at all that you would like to share, make sure to leave them down in the comment section. Billy Woods, Ethiopes. Billy Woods is an American rapper based out of New York and one half of the critically acclaimed duo Arm & Hammer. And Billy himself has certainly been privy to that appreciation from critics, having a widely beloved and treasured discography in the underground hip-hop scene, most of which I've yet to experience, so I was very excited to see a request on what seems to be one of, if not his most loved project, Ethiopes, released earlier this year in April. And let's not waste any more time, let's just dive in. What are my thoughts on Ethiopes? Let's find out as I review it track by track. Since I don't think there were any singles, we will just start at the top of the track list with that being the opener Asylum, which instantly highlights the kind of hip hop I've just gotten myself into. This is the kind of extreme lyrical density that comes off more like monologues over background noise rather than music. The instrumental is almost haunting in its minimalism, uncontrolled piano flutters, whistly yet hollow percussion slaps, occasional punches of bass, all layered behind this otherworldly crackle like I'm listening to an old VHS tape. The chorus introduces this blaring saxophone that swallows everything, but yet it's not abhorrent to my surprise. However, the lyrics here are the star of the show. Billy's an excellent lyricist, and frankly, I'm not going to go over the entire story for every track as I'd be here all day, and plus that's more of an English project than a review. You. So to give a summary, Billy's talking about how he theorizes that his neighbor was a former dictator of Ethiopia who sought and was granted asylum after his reign, while also simultaneously having to deal with his parents having marital issues and how he was just trapped in his own house. Yeah, it's a nice track. No Hard Feelings continues the tone displayed on the opening track, presenting a pretty unconventional song structure, nothing new to Billy's music, but certainly is off for me being a pop listener, just two subsequent verses. The second being much shorter than the first, while Billy raps yet again in a more storytelling fashion than an actual flow. The beat is somehow even more minimal, predominantly the thick layer of horns or possibly bagpipes obstructing some deeper bass melody. Lyrically, this one isn't as dense as the opener, but it is still a captivating tale told in two parts for each verse. The first is about this man and this crack smoker outside his apartment, both living entirely different lives until they converge when the man asks a smoker to not smoke in his vicinity, while at the same time the man is also revisiting traumas of his own. The second is about a man who got stood up and spends the rest of the night drinking, smoking, and just feeling overall disappointment and rejection. The No Hard Feelings line is used in both verses by the man in the apartment and the woman who stood the guy up as a way to exonerate themselves of wrongdoing while still admonishing the other. Again, very nice track. Wharves kicks off in an almost eerie fashion. The cavernous ringing of these bells provide the track's main melody, while the tribal percussion is brittle yet still impactful with its unorthodox pounds. This track definitely has a more typical song feeling, that might just explain why I like this track more than the others. It has a chorus, distinguishable verses, solid melody and flow. The lyrics here are definitely a lot to unpack, but follow the central topic of Europeans coming to African land, spreading diseases, colonization, and labeling the African people and a bunch of their stuff as savage, which given the way Billy describes the Europeans seems pretty hypocritical. Yeah, amazing song. Sauvage featuring Boldy James and Gabe Nandez, which seems to be one of the fan favorites of this record, and I totally get why. This beat is probably one of the most engaging on the entire record. The deep bass pulses are ringing out like thunderous bells, plus some metallic chimey rattles and light beeps of synth or guitar. I adore all the performances on this record, perfectly matching the track's energy with Boldy's deeper charisma, Billy's confidence, and Gabe's gritty melody to close out the track. Lyrically, the song kind of acts as a continuation of the themes explored on wars, dealing with trying to free the African people of their savage lifestyle, and how that somehow justifies the European colonization of Africa. This track really highlights Billy's exemplary lyrical ability, and is probably one of my favorite cuts here. The Doldrums is a grimy, slow, kind of menacing track. I'm just so enthralled by this beat. It brings back the underlying static of the opener, but with some plucky bass, simple guitar strums, and light metallic ringing. It almost just sounds like a band bored out of their mind just playing away without rhyme or reason. In fact, the beat perfectly complements the title of the track, with the doldrums being a part of the ocean where little to no wind blows and leaves sea vessels completely still. These lyrics also tie into that, referring to that period of drug dealing when you're waiting for orders so you can make money. And the way that ties into a bunch of sailor metaphors and the Atlantic slave trade as well, often leaving boats in said doldrums, just 
immaculate. Of course, with everything in the track being quiet and pretty disorderly, Billy's steady and controlled vocals really stand out. This is pure gold of a track. I love it. 9X featuring Elucid, Quelle, Chris, and Denmark Vesey, the longest track here and the only one to surpass 4 minutes, and this one leans a bit away from the conceptual side of the record. That's not to say it's a mindless posse cut banger because it's still pretty dense and has some amazing performances. I especially like Elucid's scratchy flow over the rattling shaker, stuttering percussion, and harmonica. Yeah, this is definitely one of the more fun tracks on the album and I can gravitate right to it. Excellent stuff. Christine featuring Mike Ladd has one of the more melancholic beats on the record. The downtrodden bass trudging throughout the song as the hissing cymbals and sandy ambience gently wisp along. It's quite haunting, which is another instance on this album of the vibe of the track perfectly fitting the title, as it seemed the main inspiration behind this track was the novel Christine by Stephen King. Billy mentioned it was probably one of the books he read the most, which is about a haunted vehicle. Also tying that to an old Jamaican urban legend of the same caliber, which is a malevolent spirit riding riding in a coffin that would cause disruption amongst the town folk. Once again, the track is filled with great performances. I like this one a lot too. Heavy Water featuring LP of Run the Jewels and Breeze Bruin, which despite being a mini posse cut and having two verses from each of the MCs, somehow manages to clock in at under two and a half minutes. This may just be the most compact song on the entire record. From the beginning to the end is just non-stop bars and rhyme schemes, and it is great. All three featured artists do pretty fantastic work over these plucky acoustics and fizzling percussion. All in all, a very good track. Harlem featuring Fatboy Sheriff is a track pretty much split into two parts. The first is your more typical style you'd expect with the beat here, mostly consisting of a thick wall of humming white noise and sequestered percussion. However, once the track reaches the spoken word segment, the beat gets completely stripped away and part two begins, which is an entirely different beast. The beat is unlike anything I've heard, just chaotic, unhinged piano. It almost feels like it should come off as a joke, but it's pretty creepy with all the filters laid on top of it. The flow and the delivery over this part is so asynchronous, it is as abstract as abstract hip-hop can get. As much as I want to enjoy it, it's a bit much for me and kind of leads to my least favorite cut on the album. Versailles featuring Despot probably has one of the most impactful beats on the record. It starts off quirky enough with some synth oscillating in an almost comical fashion, but then the actual beat kicks in with that same static resting atop this almost jazzier ambience with light plucking, occasional jabs of horns, and luxurious glistening behind it all. But the trademark is these triplet pounds of percussion, very satisfying to hear something that powerful and energetic compared to the rest of the album. Love both MC's cadences over these, both perform in a more gripping, assertive delivery as the central theme of the track seems to be how capitalism is an exploitative system, with the title referencing the historical importance of how France was largely built off such exploitation, like slavery. Another really nice cut. Proto Evangelium featuring Shinehead is a pretty solid track. I don't think this one stands out as much as the others, but it's by no means a bad song. The beat is more so your standard rap fare, solid percussion and bass, easygoing melody, and crisp rattling resonating behind that foundation. Billy takes up a bulk of the track rapping about his frustrations with inequalities, especially having come from a lower class background as he says in the first verse, but on the second verse he seems to be coming to some kind of end and gets to grant three wishes, though we never see the conclusion of that. Shinehead has one of the shortest feature lengths on the record and his more melodic delivery is appealing to hear. All around good tracks though. Remorseless might just contain Billy's peak performance on the entire album. The flow, the charisma, the energy in his voice plays so well over this fluttering flute making up 95% of the beat, and yet again, more static is present as well. It feels like a wise track with all those elements added together. These lyrics though, oh my god, I could just gush about these all day, but to give you the long and short of it, he's expressing his frustration for America and how excellent it supposedly is, while also being severely affected by the poverty he grew up in, and he doesn't want to participate in the capitalist system, much like colonists did generations ago. Please go give this track a listen, I know I won't be able to do it justice, it is wonderful. And finally, the closer Smith and Cross is just a good way to end the album. The beat is a little bit irritating for me, just the higher pitched humming that's incessantly running throughout the track. It's a bit on my nerves, but that's really the only flaw I can muster with the song, as Billy's delivery is just outstanding and actually pairs well with the instrumental, as these lyrics perfectly tie together the recurring themes of the album. Mainly the long-standing effects of colonialism and depictions of savagery by the Europeans, but also the generational trauma of the African people, as he caps the last verse of the record by looking at historical dioramas of African people in museums. Just 
speechless. Overall, damn, this album is immaculate. Some of the most abstract hip hop I've ever heard, pretty much every beat on the album is unique. Billy's lyrics don't disappoint at all and almost every feature kills it. I almost feel like with my listen of this album that my entire expectation and understanding of what abstract and underground hip hop can truly be have been completely changed. This album sets a new bar that really hasn't been matched by anything else in the genre, and while some tracks didn't fully reach the pinnacle that the rest of the album did for me, it's pretty safe to say that I get why this album is damn loved. I'm feeling a 9 out of 10 on this album. Well guys, hope you enjoyed that review. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.